Yvonne Kelly here, and today I want to share with you my July wrap-up. And I have not done a wrap-up in a year, at least. I usually do recent reads where I just talk about maybe four or five books at a time, but it turns out I got really behind on my recent reads, and when I looked up, I hadn't done any of the books I had read in July, so might as well just do a wrap up since it's the 31st when I'm filming this. I did talk about two of the books I read in my last recent reads because I was doing a whole video just on my LGBT plus books. But other than that, the rest of the 13 books I read this month, I haven't talked about yet. So this might be a little longer than my recent reads because I am talking about 13 books. But I'll try to talk about some of them shorter because I did discuss several of these in my recent vlogs for Middle Grade Magic and for um, The Reading Rush. Also, I am trying out different places in my house to film. Um, if you saw my, what was that, Do I Have That Book Challenge, my bookshelf is in my bedroom and there's no natural light. So I want to find a place with actual natural light. This is in my living room and I have like my current TBR on this mantle on my fireplace. So, and there's light coming in from the window. So maybe this will be my place. Let me know if this seems like well lit enough and works for you. There's probably a bit of an echo in here because we have tall ceilings and we don't have any furniture or things like absorbing the sound. So that could have sound problems. I am gonna buy a microphone soon. So you actually probably the next video you see from me, I will be wearing a lapel mic. So my sound is gonna get better. All right, so now let's get into the 13 books that I want to talk about. And back when I did wrap ups, the way I did these is I would start with a five star book, go down to my least favorite book and then back up to a five star book so that I could sandwich the bad with the good things. So that's what I'm gonna do again. So I'm gonna start with one of my favorite books and it was Scythe by Neil Shusterman. And I gave this book five stars. And for those that don't know, the Scythe trilogy is about kind of a dystopian future world where everyone on earth, you know, no longer dies of natural causes, like all diseases have been taken care of. If somebody were to get in an accident, we have the capability of fixing their bodies and all that stuff. So everybody just lives forever basically. And so there are still people having babies, so there has to be some population control. So they created this scythe where people that are scythes have the permission to pick people to kill and they would be permanently dead in order to control the population. Great premise. This is really hyped, so I kind of put off reading it. I also like to wait to read series until they're all out. And since this, the third book is coming out this year, I thought it was the time to read it. I buddy read this with a couple friends and I really enjoyed it. Obviously I gave it five stars. I really love the way he like created this premise. I thought it was a really interesting world where there's a lot of moral questions because there are obviously sites that have to, they're picking who dies. So there are some sites that seem to have a really strict moral code of being completely random about the people they pick or are following kind of like a pre immortality way of looking at who goes. And then there are people that enjoy killing and kill in mass and stuff like that and use fear and all that. So it really like, I think brings up a lot of issues about morality and death and like the future about if we were to cure diseases and do all that stuff, is that really a good thing? Because the population does have to be controlled. So I really liked it. I know that some people I've heard complain that there's a romance in there that really doesn't need to be in there. I personally don't think that book one has any romance at all. And I've heard that maybe the romance de develops in the second book, but by reading the first one, I was like, what romance are you talking about? There's like no romance in this book, but I guess maybe the way they're developing the relationship between the two characters, people feel like it, it seems like a romance. I don't know. I wasn't bothered by that because I didn't feel like there was a romance. Next I have Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welch and I gave this four and a half stars. I listened to this on audiobook and it was a great like really fast quick listen to um, so I really enjoyed the audiobook of this and I liked how this was a it was a young adult contemporary with romance and I knew it was going to be a romance going in but I didn't expect it to have such so many more other themes other than just a romance. There was a lot about the family. It's about our main character Lena whose mother dies of cancer and so then she is sent to live with her father who she's never met before 
in Italy. So it's her moving to a whole other country, living with somebody she's never met before, never even heard about before really, like she never heard anything about her father. And so I really enjoyed um, all the family stuff that was happening. The romance was cute too, but I just liked how going into this that I was expecting just a light fluffy romance and got like a lot more stuff. So I'm really excited to read this, the companion novel that goes with this. Um, what is that? Love and Luck. So eventually I'll get to that. My next book is A Week of Mondays by Jessica Brody. And this is basically just a young adult Groundhog Day. Um, so this girl, Ellison, has a really horrible Monday. Everything goes wrong. You know, her boyfriend breaks up with her. Everything that possibly could go wrong goes wrong. And so when she goes to bed that night after getting broken up with, she's like, I really wish I had a do-over. Next morning she wakes up and it's Monday again. And so she's living Monday again over and over and over again trying to get things right and she thinks if she can just keep her boyfriend from breaking up with her or fix their relationship that it'll fix the repetition of days. Unlike Love and Gelato, this is just a fluffy plot contemporary YA book. There's not any deeper meaning or message really. I mean other than like just being happy with yourself, there's not really like a higher theme happening here but it was a fun read i liked it because it I, this was my first physical book i had read in almost a month i've been doing almost exclusively audiobooks because of just you know unpacking and all that too much stuff to do to actually read a physical book so i actually really liked having this as my first physical book because it was a fast read i could pick it up and put it down very easily so i would recommend it if you like that kind of theme the only negative I had about it was that it does get really repetitive. That's not really the fault of the book because that just kind of happens whenever you have a Groundhog Day theme because you're reliving the same thing. It got to where I was like, maybe we could have shortened this up because this is actually pretty long. This is like 450 pages long. Could have been shorter. But the thing I loved about this the most is it had that trope of like her best friend's a boy who they've been friends since they were little and he like climbs into her window every day basically to hang out and talk. And I just love that trope. It's like so Dawson's Creek. Like, So if you're somebody that likes Dawson Creek, this would be a good book as well. Next, I listened to Dragon Pearl by Yoon Ha Lee, and I gave that four stars. And this is a middle grade sci-fi fantasy about a girl named Men who is also a fox. So she has fox magic where she can turn into anything she wants. So she can become another, she can look like another person, she can become an animal, she can become an inanimate object, things like that. And she has to kind of keep that identity a secret from other people because people don't trust foxes. And then also at the beginning we find out that her brother who was working on a spaceship, like working for the government, um, has gone AWOL and it and so people are after her brother she doesn't think that her brother would have gone AWOL on purpose like that something must have happened to him so she decides to leave home to go and find her brother and I really loved how this felt like very epic sci-fi even though it's from middle grade that I mean yes it's not gonna have like as much of the fighting and deaths and stuff as an adult book but I thought there was tons of adventure. There was definitely felt like there were stakes happening when like they were in dangerous situations. They, the author did a great job about building this world and all the different like characters. And I just loved it. I thought it was a lot of fun. So I would suggest it if you're somebody that just is trying to try out new middle grade books, but you don't think that you would want something that would be dumbed down for little kids. You want something that still feels um, like has substance, I would suggest this book if you are a sci-fi reader. The next one is Dead Wake, The Last Crossing of the Lusitania by Eric Larson, and I gave this book three stars. And this is a nonfiction book that he did a ton of research about the Lusitania, which was a yacht that sunk. And so this is after the Titanic, and this is during World War One, and we're at the point where Germany has basically said, that they are going to attack anybody that are on the seas um, without prejudice. And everybody's like, oh, they wouldn't attack a like merchant ship or like a ship with like regular citizens. And obviously they did. And it was like, it's a big tragedy. I feel like it's one of those that 
we might have heard of the Lusitania, but we don't hear about it as much as the Titanic, but it really is important in World War I and how America kind of got pulled into the war. And I really do enjoy Eric Larson. Like I liked Devil in the White City, but my problem was he researched it so much, put so much detail in, this book got a little bogged down for me. And I appreciate how much he researches and really like pulls in so you find out everything that's happening. Um, but it, for me, I don't do well with like stories that are about war where there's so much political detail and minute details about what's happening at the time. It was a little too much for me. I kind of wanted to focus just on the like sinking and like what led to that, but this gave you a very broad scope and also very tiny detail about like he would start talking about what people were wearing down to the color of the buttons and all this stuff and it was just too much. I don't need to know exactly what the trunk looked like that this woman was carrying onto the yacht. It was just too much for me. But the second half of the book was amazing because that's when we start to actually get, we got both perspective of the people on the ship and then the perspective of the like captain of the U-boat who is eventually going to torpedo the yacht. So we get to see both sides and I did enjoy that. And so the second half was a lot more interesting but the first half was just way too much setup. And I know he's doing that so that you get to like like these people so that you feel bad when some of them die later like I get that but it was just a little too much so if you are somebody that watches watched the movie Titanic and thought wow it's taken a long time for the ship to sink that's what this bo book is gonna be like now we're getting into books I really didn't like like at least three stars dead waking up I enjoyed them fine but now we're getting to into my like two star books that I did not enjoy and the next one is roomies by Christina Lauren and I gave this book two and a half stars. This is a romance about a woman named Holland who lives in New York City and she's kind of adrift, like she's doing a job that she doesn't really like wanna be doing. And she kind of gets herself in this situation where she is in a fake relationship with this man. And so I like the fake relationship tropes, so that's why I gave this book a chance. And I really like The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren, but I've heard their older stuff is a little more into the like no plot romance and more, more smutty. And I should have just stuck with their newer things because this book, I mean, it wasn't like smutty to the point of like some books, but there were a lot of sex scenes, which it was a little too much for me. But the main thing that bothered me was that there was no plot. Like the entire plot was just will they or won't they get together. And that's not enough for me. I like to have a little bit extra stuff going on in her life, but like it was either her feeling like insecure about herself or about the relationship and then a ton of miscommunication, which bothers me, where I'm like, just talk to each other. If you just talk, this whole book wouldn't exist. And so if you're somebody that's bothered by either of those things, you probably don't want to read it. But if you're somebody that just enjoys a romance that's just a romance and that has a lot of sex scenes that maybe you would want to read this book. The next book that I didn't enjoy was Be Prepared by Vera Brosgall and this is a graphic novel. It can also kind of be a graphic memoir because the main character is Vera and it's about her childhood but she says specifically in the afterword that she didn't remember a lot of the, her experiences so it does kind of like blend into fiction because she doesn't recall all of her experiences. And this is about Vera when she was nine, going to summer camp for the first time and basically having a horrible time. And I read this because I worked in summer camp for years. I like to read stories about camp. And even though I knew she didn't like her time, I thought, well, maybe they'll be like, you know, that happy, like it turns around for her and all that stuff. And I liked the art. I enjoy her artwork. This is all on a green scale. And I think her artwork is really cute. But this book was, really depressing. I just don't know what the audience for this book is. As an adult, I didn't enjoy it. I know it's like, it's a middle grade graphic mem novel. So I was like, oh, well maybe, you know, for 12 year olds. But then I don't think I would give this to the average like nine to 12 year old because then they would never want to go to camp like ever. So I don't know what audience this is for. Maybe kids that are getting bullied and want to feel like they're being heard something like that, but it is kind of depressing. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend for you or your children. 
The next book I read was In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware and I gave this two stars. This is actually probably my least favorite book of the entire month. I would have DNF'd this but I have a really hard time DNF'ing thrillers because I just want to know what happens but I almost probably should have just like read the last 15 pages or something like that so that I didn't have to like suffer through the entire book but it was a quicker read. I just did not enjoy myself. This is about a woman named Nora who is in her late 20s and she gets suddenly invited to a hen party for those of us in America a bachelorette party for a girl that she was good friends with back in school like back when she was like in her teens and they haven't talked for 10 years and so she's not quite sure why she's getting invited to this hen party but she ends up going and it's out in the middle of the woods like they rented a they are using a cabin that's out in the middle of nowhere and yeah that's the basic setup for it and the problem with this is that I really can't handle books especially thrillers where the whole like drama and what's driving the thriller is teenage drama but they're adults like I read young adult books and I expect there to be teenage drama in a YA book it's you know I wouldn't read them if I didn't you know expect it in that but I do not like teenage drama in a book full of 26 to 28 year olds like get over it you guys are adults so the like driving force of this is like things that happened to them when they were 16 and they're still invested in those problems and things that happened and I'm like you're an adult let's move on so <laughs> that bothered me the whole like premise and setup but I did just want to find out the end and then when I got to the end I was like yeah that was dumb I, did, I shouldn't have wasted my time I've heard Ruth Ware gets better like with every book so I'm going to read one of her newer novels like The Death of Mrs. Westaway. I still want to read that. I just don't think I'm going to read her older stuff anymore because yeah I did not enjoy this one single bit. I gave it two instead of one because her writing isn't bad. It's just I didn't find any enjoyment from this. It wasn't like offensive. I just did not like it. So the next book I read was The Red Notebook by Antoine Lorraine and this is a very short this is only like 150 pages so if you want a quick read and this is basically like Sleepless in Seattle. So if you've seen that movie that's the basic plot. It's about like and the way it's similar is that there's two people we're following both their perspectives and they don't meet each other but they like know of each other and they're like following for each other without actually having met kind of like Sleepless in Seattle and the way they do that is in this this our main character Lara he finds a woman's purse sitting on top of a trash can he assumes you know this woman was probably mugged and the thief just left the purse there's no wallet and cell phone so that makes sense that it was stolen and then just thrown so he takes the contents of the purse including a red notebook that's basically the woman's journal and tries to find this woman and as he's like going through her stuff he's falling for her and so he even more wants to find her and then we're also hearing from her too in both perspectives I won't say any more because it's very short the reason I don't like it is I'm not I'm actually not a huge fan of the movie Sleepless in Seattle and I probably should have really thought about that before reading this that like that whole concept of falling for somebody when you've never even had a conversation with them and you've never met them in person it doesn't really work for me because I'm like it's not even like they've talked online or anything like that this is like I'm purely falling for you based on your possessions and some stuff that you wrote down and so like I don't know that doesn't really necessarily work for me and the other and I probably would have been okay with it if maybe it just was that far but then it kind of got into creepy stalkerish area for me and I know not everybody thinks that because this book gets a lot of good ratings a lot of people think it's really charming but yeah it just got a little too stalkerish for me so I didn't necessarily love it but I don't think it's a badly written book so if you are somebody that likes that trope that really enjoys the movie Sleepers in Seattle then I would pick this up and give it a try it's obviously a quick read so if you just want an afternoon read if you enjoy that trope the next book I listened to was Where the Mountain Meets the Moon by Grace Lynn and I gave this three and a half stars so I'm starting to get into the books I like again and this one is a middle grade fantasy kind of fairy tale folk tale type story. It is about a girl named Min Lee who her and her family are very poor and her whole life her dad has told her all these like 
folk tales and stories. And in the stories, there is this um, man in the moon that kind of answers all the questions of life and things like that. And she decides she needs to go and find the man in the moon to ask him how to turn around her family's fate in order to live a better life. And so she goes off on, on this adventure. She meets a dragon and they become friends and go on this whole adventure together. And this book, start, the reason I gave it three and a half is because it started off really slow for me. Um, I didn't really get into it until the last third of the book, but you kind of need that setup because the whole book, she does like bring it all together. She uses every single story and thing that has happened and brings it all in. So I get that she needs all that in the story. And a lot of other people love this book. This gets like super high ratings. Just for me, it just took me a long time to get into it. So I can't give it like the full five stars, the full four stars, but I do think it's a worthwhile read if you like folktale like stories. Um, and also since it's like, it's kind of younger middle grade. So if you have kids in like middle to upper elementary, so I would say starting even at like age eight, they could do this because it doesn't have anything scary or anything like that. Um, and it's very heavy handed with the like morality and meaning to the story. So if for younger kids, that would work because you're totally gonna get what the message is. And it does work for adults. I really connected with the parents in the story as a parent and having some of the same issues that the parents had, um, I really did connect. So when we got to the end, I was just like adoring the ending and the way the parents ended and everything came together great. The last third was like five stars. It was just that the first half was a little slow for me. The next book I read was The Princess Curse by Mary Haskell. This is also a middle grade fantasy kind of fairy tale type story. And this is about a girl named Revka who is an herbalist or she's an herbalist apprentice. So she wants to be a master herbalist and she um, is trying to figure out the solution to the 12 dancing princesses. So this is also a retelling of the 12 dancing princesses. She's in a kingdom where these princesses have for like six years or something suffered every night, you know, their shoes are ruined, all that stuff. And there's a reward for the person that solves the curse. And she really needs that reward so that she can become a master herbalist. So she's trying to figure out the solution. This book is also partly a Beauty and the Beast retelling. So it combines both of those. And I ended up giving this book four stars. I really loved the writing. I loved Revka. I thought she was a great main character. I enjoyed a lot of the like fairy tale like aspects. The reason I didn't give it five stars is because I don't want to tell too much detail because it's kind of like the, the last third of the book that kind of brought it down for me, but it's the part that basically is the Beauty and the Beast retelling, which is sad because I love Beauty and the Beast retellings, but I just didn't like the way they did the Beauty and the Beast retelling. I liked the 12 Dancing Princesses part and I liked all the other parts of the story, but when it got to kind of Beauty and the Beast, it just didn't work for me. If you want to know more details, you can ask me in the comments. I just don't want to say what bothered me because it would be a spoiler for those that want to go into it. But like I said, I think it's still a good story if you like kind of fairy tale like things and if you like those um, retellings. I definitely will be reading more by Mary Haskell because I thought it, she had a really great way of creating the world and creating the characters. There was just the, that one little thing towards the end that bothered me. The next book I want to talk about is the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Mary Ann Schaefer. And I listened to this on audiobook, which I highly recommend because it's a full cast audio. So in all the like letters, since this is written in like an epistolary form, it's all in letters. We got to like hear each person writing their letter and I loved that. And this is about a woman named Juliet and all the correspondence she has in 1946. So this is after World War II has ended and she's trying to write a book and she ends up writing to some people in this book club on the island of Guernsey and she kind of gets sucked into their world and eventually wants to like write a book about the um, German occupation in Guernsey and about these people. And I just found this book so incredibly charming. Each character had very distinct traits. I could picture each one of these people and I just loved the entire group. Um, it was heading towards a five star read and I think that the reason it didn't make five stars is that even though I liked the letter writing, the problem with letter writing is that like when you try to throw in a romance, which she did, 
it's hard to create that romantic tension and like a satisfying ending when you're not seeing it in present tense. You're only hearing about the romance through like past tense of like, oh, this is what I felt like when I first saw him and all this stuff. And it just didn't work for me. But I watched the movie like two days after reading the book and the movie did a great job with the romance, not as well with the characters, but did a great job with the romance. So if you actually put the, ro the movie and the book together, it was a five star for me where the book was just four stars. So I would like, now that I have both read it and watched it, I can meld the, the story in my mind and think of it as a five star experience. So I, it is one of those where I would say do both the book and the movie together because they complement each other. And the last book I want to talk about is Lock Every Door by Riley Sager, and I gave this one five stars. This is a thriller about a woman named Jules who she doesn't have a place to live in New York City, like she just broke up with her boyfriend, and she doesn't have a lot of money, and she finds this advertisement to be an apartment sitter in this really fancy building. And so she becomes this apartment sitter, and there's all these rules. You have to spend every night at the in the apartment you're not supposed to talk to the other people living in the building because they're like you know mostly like rich and elite people and they don't want to be bothered and yada yada there's like lots of rules and i just love the way he created this like creepy eerie atmosphere and you have no idea what's happening like or at least i didn't have any idea what's happening i didn't know if something supernatural was happening if it was like a person or what was happening, but just weird things start happening to her and she's feeling really afraid. And you're and that as a reader, I was feeling that fear and feeling that like helplessness of like, I have no idea what's happening, but she has no money so she can't leave. And like, yeah, so I thought he created that atmosphere really well. And there was no point where I was getting bored. Like a lot of times when in thrillers, there's like a point where I'm like, okay, let's get to like a twist or a reveal. And it seemed like every time I was getting close to that point, he came up with like a new thing. So I really enjoyed it, gave it five stars because I liked the whole thing. Some people don't like the ending from when I read Goodreads, but I liked it. I thought that it wrapped up great and enjoyed the entire thing. So those are all of my 13 books that I want to talk about this month. And in August, I will do my best to go back to my recent reads so that you don't have to like hear me talk so quickly about each one because I like to talk more in detail about the books I read. If you've read any of these, I'd love to talk about them down below. I had a lot of fun participating in both middle grade magic and being an, a co-host for that one and doing the reading rush. This was a lot of fun this month. A lot of great audiobooks. So if you need some audiobook recommendations, a lot of the books I listened to were excellent audiobook narrators. And I am looking forward to my reading month in August. Bye.